Integration testing is a testing approach where you go beyond the scope of a single unit and you start testing the integrations between your components. Integration tests are valuable because they mimic the actual runtime behavior of your application and in this video I'm going to show you how to implement integration tests using Mediator's request pipeline and the test containers library which we are going to use to spin up a docker container running our database for each of our tests. I'm going to start by introducing a test folder on our solution level which is going to contain our test project and I'm going to add a new test project inside I'll be using xUnit and I'm going to call this project application integration tests I'm going to create this project and then we're going to build our infrastructure for the integration tests out of the box we get an empty unit test project which I'm going to get rid of and the global usings file with the using statements so we're going to leave this and I'm going to remove the unit test class I'll start by introducing a few NuGet packages to our solution and I'm going to look for the Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC testing library. We're going to use this library to obtain an instance of the web application factory. We're going to use it to wire up our web API so that we can obtain a running application instance inside of our test and also rearrange some dependencies so that we can leverage our Docker containers. So I'm going to go ahead and install this library and I'm going to look for test containers. Test containers is a library that's going to allow us to spin up a Docker container inside of our test and run the integration tests using that docker container. I'm going to install the test containers PostgreSQL package because I'm using PostgreSQL in this project and I'm only interested in setting up a database. So I'm going to install this package and let's see what we're going to do next. I'm going to add a new class inside of our test project which is going to be my integration test web app factory. This is going to be my custom web application factory and I need to implement the web application factory base class and then I need to specify the entry point for my web API. This is going to be the program file which is exposed in my web API project. So I'm going to add a reference to this project so that I can access this file. The next problem that you will run into is that the program class is internal to the web API project. Because of that it is inaccessible to our integration test so we first have to fix this before we can move on with integration testing. Here's one approach that you might try and this is decorating your project file with the internals visible to attribute. I'm specifying the name of my test project so that any internal classes inside of the web API are visible to this project. If we go back to our custom web application factory, you're going to see a different error this time. It's going to say that there's an inconsistent accessibility between these two classes. The program class is internal and your test is public. So you're going to fix this by making the test class internal, but this is going to cause other problems down the line and you won't be able to run your tests because XUnit requires the test classes to be public. So here's the correct way to solve this with the XUnit and minimal APIs. I'm going to get rid of this altogether and we're going to try a different approach. I'll open up the program class and I'm going to add some code at the bottom of this file to make this class public. So you're going to define a public partial class with the same name as your file. Now if I go back to my custom web application factory, the error is gone and I can continue on with my implementation. This is unfortunately a hack, but if you want to be using the minimal APIs approach, you're going to have to learn to live with it. I'm going to override the configure web host method which is going to give me access to the web host builder. The builder exposes some methods that we are interested in and the one that we want to run is the configure test services. This is going to allow us to configure dependency injection only for tests running using this custom web application factory and I want to replace my dependency on EF core with something that's going to connect to my container that I'm going to spin up using the test containers library. So here's what we have to do. First we're going to need to find a service descriptor for our DB context options for our database context. So I'm going to access services and I'm going to say single or default. We're looking for a specific descriptor where the service type 
is equal to, and I'll move this to a next row so that you can see it better. I'll say type of DB context options, and I'm going to specify my application DB context as the generic parameter. So this is the service descriptor that I'm looking for. And if this descriptor is not null, we're going to remove it from the services that we have configured in the program class. We're going to do this by saying services, remove, and pass in our descriptor. Then I need to configure EF core again, only this time I need to connect to my Docker container running Postgres. So we're going to say services at DB context, and I'm going to specify the application database context. I'll say options, and now I can configure my database context to use PostgreSQL. I'll need to specify my connection string somehow. As I mentioned, this is going to be a Docker container. I'll deal with this in just a moment. And I'm also going to apply the snake case naming convention, which I also have defined in my persistence project. This takes care of configuring EF core for the test, but how are we going to connect to our Docker container running Postgres? This is where test containers come in, and here's what you have to do. I'm going to create a private read-only field that's going to contain my PostgreSQL container. I'm going to give it a name of DB container, and here's how we're going to create it. We're going to instantiate a new instance of the PostgreSQL builder, and now I can configure some settings for my Docker container. For example, I can specify which image I want to be using, and ideally this is going to be the same one in my Docker Compose or the one I'm running in production. In this case, I'm using Postgres latest, so let's also use that one for our integration test. So I'll specify that as the image. Then we need to say which database we are connecting to. It's called eShop. I'll also specify the username and password from my Docker container, and both are called Postgres. And after I applied all of my settings on the container, I need to build it to get back a container instance. I also need to take care of disposing of this container. So I'm going to implement the iAsync lifetime interface, which is coming from XUnit. And this is going to allow us to initialize the container and get rid of it when the test is over. In the initialize async, I'm going to start my database container. And in the dispose async, I'm going to stop my database container. This is also going to complain that we are overriding a method that is available on our base class. So I'm going to specify new here to tell the compiler that this is a different method. This takes care of starting up and stopping our container. And the only thing that's remaining is to provide the actual connection string to the database. So we're going to do that by saying DB container get connection string. And this is going to provide the connection string at runtime to the Docker instance running this container. And then we're going to be able to connect to this container and execute our test. The next thing I'm going to do is to add a class that's going to be my base integration test. This is going to be an abstract class and it's going to contain some utilities that I'm going to need. First of all, it needs to implement the iClass fixture interface and I'm going to specify my integration test web app factory as the generic argument. What do I gain from doing this? Well, now I can inject my integration test web app factory from the constructor and I can use it to resolve any services that I'm going to need for running my tests. So here's what I'm going to do. I'll create a private read-only service scope instance and I'm going to use it to be able to instantiate any scoped services that I'm going to need for this test. So this is going to be factory services create scope. And now I can use this scope to resolve any scope services. What are the scoped services that we are going to need? Well, I want to expose a protected read-only instance of the iSender so that my tests implementing the base integration test can use this sender to send commands and queries through the request pipeline. Because I'm using scoped services in my request handlers, I also need to resolve this using the service scope. So the sender instance is going to be scope, service provider, get required service, and I'll specify iSender. I'll also make this constructor protected, and 
let's see how we're going to use it to implement our first test. Let's implement some integration tests for our products and I'll first implement a test targeting the create product command handler. This command handler takes a create product command, creates a new product instance, adds it to the repository and then persists this to the database. This is a very simple operation and the result is a new product will be persisted in the database. So let's create a new class inside of our test project which I will call product tests. We're going to implement our base integration test, provide the constructor argument and pass it to our base constructor. And we're ready to write our first test. So this is going to be an asynchronous test saying that the create should add new product to database, for example. I'm sure you could come up with a much better name, but this is descriptive enough to illustrate what this test is going to do. Let's prepare the arrange, act, and assert steps. And now I'm ready to implement my first integration test. So in the arrange step, I'm going to create a new command instance. And this is going to be the create product command. We need to specify a product name. Let's say this is some database. We're going to give it a SKU of one, two, three. The currency is going to be the US dollar and the amount is 99.99. Of course, this has to be a decimal. And I made a typo here, so let me fix that as well. In the act step, I just need to take my sender instance, send this command. So this is going to be my command instance. I don't have a cancellation token, so I can omit this. In the assert step, I need to verify that the product was created. To be able to test this, I need my create product command to actually return something. Right now it's returning nothing, but I'll need at least the product ID of the newly created product so that I can fetch it from the database after the create step and verify that it was actually created. So we're going to solve this in a moment. However, let's try to run our test right now and let's see what's going to happen. We're going to get an argument exception from the SKU create method. This is the call in our create product command handler to SKU create. And we have some validation in place inside of this class, which is throwing an argument exception if the SKU is invalid. So you can also test something like this. And here's how. Instead of awaiting the sender.send, I'm going to turn it into a method. So this is a method returning back a task. And then what we do is we await assert dot froze async. We're going to specify the argument exception as the exception that's going to be thrown by the action. This is going to run our test and verify that we are throwing an exception. So let me run this test again. And I'm expecting that it's going to pass because my test is indeed throwing an argument exception. So this is working. Let's now update the create product command to return a GUID. So I'm going to say I request of GUID, but I also have an I command abstraction, which I added earlier, which also allows me to specify the return type of this command. I need to update the create product command handler to now return a GUID. And this is going to be the identifier of my product. I'm also going to update the handle method to give me back this GUID instance and I'll say return the product ID. The product ID is a strongly typed ID, so I'll have to return the actual value. Now I can go back to my product tests and create a new one. First of all, I'm going to rename this test to say should throw argument exception and I'll add a condition when skew is invalid. So this test verifies that the create product command and the respective handler are going to throw an argument exception when we pass in an invalid SKU. I'm going to take this test and use it for my second test. And this is going to say should add product when command is valid. All right. And what is a valid command? Well, I just need my SKU to have eight characters. Now in the act step, I'm actually going to await my command. And because of our updates, it's going to return back the product ID, which is going to be a GUID. And now I need to use this product ID 
to get the product from the database and verify that it's not now. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'll go to my base integration test and I'm just going to expose one more field. This is going to be my application DB context and we can call it DB context. I'm also going to resolve it from this scope. So I'm going to say scope service provider get required service and give me back the application DB context. If I head back to my test, I'll be able to say DB context products and look for a product with this ID. So let's say first or default, we want to get the product where the product ID is equal to the one that we got back from our command. Let's save the result of this call to a variable called product. Now I'm just going to assert that the product is not now. Now I'm going to run both of my tests and I'm also going to show you my Docker desktop. You can see our tests are running in the background and here's a new container running PostgreSQL. As soon as the test complete, it gets disposed and when everything is cleared up, we're going to see that all of the containers that we had running are going to disappear. And you can see that all of the containers are gone and both of our tests have passed and we are successfully connecting to the database running inside of a Docker container. I'm going to show you one more test which you can run just to make a full circle. So I'm going to say get by ID should return product when product exists. Here's what I'm going to do in this test. I'm going to use the create product command as part of my arrange step to create a product in the database and then I'll create a new get product query instance and pass it the product ID. This is going to be the product that I just created in the database and I expect the query to return back some results. I'll get rid of the EF core query fetching the product and I'm going to say that the product will come from sending the query that we just defined. So we send the get product query and we expect to get back a product instance because I first created it in the arrange step of this test. I'm going to place a few breakpoints inside of this test to show you what's happening when we actually run this test using test containers. So I'm going to run this test but using debug and we're going to see what's happening behind the scenes. First, we're going to hit the breakpoint inside of our custom web application factory and we are calling the configure test services method to set up EF core. We try to get the service descriptor for our application DB context and because we found it, we're going to remove it and configure EF core again and this time we're going to set the connection string to point to our database container. If we take a look at this database container, you can see some details about it. If I open the immediate window and run the DB container get connection string method, you're going to see the connection string that will be passed to EF core. So the port is 54765 and this is because our Docker container that was spun up by the test containers library is exposed on this port. Now internally it's using the default Postgres port 5432 but at runtime this port gets switched so that you can run your tests in parallel. Let's continue with our test execution. So I'm going to press continue and we're going to land inside of our test. We're first going to execute the create product command and here we are in the create product command handler. I'm going to step through these steps and you'll see that my save changes call completes and I get back the product ID of the product that was just added to the database. I'm going to hit continue again and we are back in our test and now if I try to send this query you're going to see that I'll get back a product instance containing the product information and it's going to match the one that we just created in the previous step. So our test is going to succeed and this is a really powerful way to be running integration tests because you can set up external dependencies using Docker containers. You can also run these tests in your continuous integration pipelines such as GitHub Actions because it supports Docker out of the box. If you enjoyed this video then make sure to subscribe to my channel and take a look at this video next and until next time stay awesome.